Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you five selections for tomorrow's racing which will include some picks from the first day of the St. Ledger meeting at Doncaster. Really looking forward to the next few days there. Got some decent action and hopefully we can find some winners for you there. But before we get into them, let's quickly just recap on how our tips performed today. In the end, it was another frustrating day. So we started off really well. Uh, we put up the max we can to win at Goodwood. He put forward a game performance. It was a really uh, gutsy win by him and he was quite a cosy winner, I thought, in the end. He was advertised at 11-4 to and he was actually quite well gambled today. So hope some of you were able to get on at those earlier prices. Elsewhere, though, it wasn't uh, to be. Kelmscott was just very disappointing. Actually, nothing really came from off the pace there at Windsor. That was a frustrating one. I thought Captain Haddock wasn't given the best ride by Henry Henry Main. Uh, gave the winner too much rope and in the end uh, did close in the final stages. But yeah, just had too much ground to make up. And then Touchwood as well was just taken off his feet. And again, it was a front runner that won at Goodwood. Well, we saw earlier today, it paid to be handy on the sprint course. So yeah, bit of a frustrating day today. Started off well, but then went a little bit downhill after that. And again, we just came out with a really small loss. So hopefully we can do better tomorrow and have a few winners and actually start getting back uh, in the black because it has been a little bit of a frustrating day the last couple of days. We've had a winner or two, but yeah, then it's just... Uh, just we've just come out with a small loss but hopefully we can do better tomorrow and like I said we've got some picks for you at Doncaster tomorrow and that's where we're going to be starting in the 325 in the group three uh, scepter stakes for Phillies and I thought Loch Lean could be the one here going to be an extra selection at seven to one uh, for Tom Marquand and Jesse Harrington you can current, currently get this off like I say at seven to one with uh, Paddy Bauer and Betfair who offer him four places on this race I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here now I think this horse could be a little bit shorter in the market and I think she's gotten a lot in her favour tomorrow. I think she'll be suited uh, by this track. I don't think she was suited last time by uh, the course at Tipperary. Uh, she got going late on and she was kind of on the turn if you go back and watch the race. She didn't look happy there. I think returning to a straight course like Doncaster will really uh, suit her down to the ground because if you go back to her uh, penultimate start she was actually quite a convincing winner when she won at Deauville. She won a listed race there. I will admit it was on soft ground but that doesn't bother me at all that it's going to be quicker ground tomorrow because if you look back at some of her earlier form she's handled it no problem at all she won last season as a juvenile on fast ground at cork so it shouldn't be a problem for her tomorrow so i think she's got quite a few things in her favor there also as well she beat william haggett's as a filly called uh, cloudy dawn and she uh, went on to win a group three in france next time and she beat uh, ivan Fatado's just beautiful who's actually a shorter price in our selection tomorrow so i think she's gonna have more in her favor tomorrow lock lane and i think she's been overlooked here in the market jesse harrington's team are going along nicely as well they've got a good strike rate at the moment and i think this horse has got a good chance of being there or thereabouts tomorrow and also as well which is a positive she'll be getting a three-year-old land so she's gonna be the first tip to start the day we then go to the four o'clock at doncaster for the listed scarborough stakes and I'm going to go here with Cardam. He's going to be my next best tomorrow for Jim Crowley and Charlie Hills. Now, I think tomorrow he might have a little bit more to offer drop back and trip to the five furlongs. Because if you watch how he raced last time out, he showed a lot of speed, but he was just closed um, late on. And I think possibly dropping back and trip could be the key to him. He's never tried uh, this shorter trip before, but I just think he's always been a speedy type. And I think he could be quite hard hard to peg back in this race tomorrow he'll have the ground in his favor he's a previous course winner charlie hills as well has got a good record in this race does well with sprinters um at this track i just think he could have a lot in his favor tomorrow he's got the blinkers on again as well so a lot of things uh ticked in his favor tomorrow and on some of this form even last year he can definitely uh he definitely would be the one to beat in this race arecibo um obviously has had the form this year at the higher level but needs to bounce back from a little bit of a disappointing run you have to say at york last time out did have obviously a lot to do but had shown better earlier on this season so i do think cardam is at nine to four at the moment you are maybe taking a bit of a risk there but i do think he has untapped potential now trying this five furlong trip for the first time and yeah, I'm going to take a chance on him being my next best of the day. We then go to an extra tip then in the next race at Doncaster, the 4.30. I thought Faisal could be a good thing here. He's currently available at the time recording with Bet365 at 6-4. to four. That's a standout price. I'm going to recommend a one-point win bet here for Holly Doyle 
and uh, John and Fady goes in, in the colours of Ahmed Al Sagal, um, who Holly uh, became his retained rider last year. He's done really well um, since uh, joining uh, his ownership and being uh, being his retained rider. But this horse, Faisal, he's unbeaten. He's free from free, and I think he could be a group horse in the handicap. Now he hasn't been seen since he won earlier this season at Windsor, but he did a good job that day. So when he fought really deep. And if you actually go back and watch the race and look at the form and analyse it, it's actually produced quite a few winners. He beat the likes of Alfred Boucher, who's only now rated £2 lower than him. So it was a good race for the grade there. And I think he could have more to come. I think the ground be fine. The track should be fine. And I think he's got a lot more to offer. He will have to carry top weight, but I do think he could be a class above here. And John and Thady Gosden's team, they've had quite a quiet season by their standards, but they are starting to be amongst the winners again. They've had a few uh, horses going recently. And I do think um, that this horse, Faisal, he's got a really good chance in this race and should be the one to beat. And yeah, I think he'll, he'll, he'll uh, take all beating there in the 4.30 at Doncaster. We then go to the long shot of the day, which runs in the last race there, the five o'clock at Donny. And I thought Princess Power could be the one here for Tyler Hurd claiming five. He's riding for Nigel Tinkler. Nigel Tinkler's team are in really good form at the moment, does well with sprinters. And this horse has got a good record at the course. It's a previous course and distance winner. And in fact, her last victory came over this course and distance. And she's now off a seven pound lower mark. Now, she's always been quite a consistent filly. She made the frame quite a few times during her career in the last 12 months or so. But just it's been a bit of a tricky horse to win with but she's going to get plenty of pace to aim at in here and i think that's going to suit her down to the ground this trip as well is a bit of a unique trip it's about it's kind of nearly like a five and a half furlong um trip so yeah i do think that she'll be suited by this tomorrow the ground should be fine tyler heard as well knows this horse reasonably well as ridden her at Bath on quite a few occasions. Is drawn out in the wing, but I imagine she'll be held up and then she'll come hopefully towards the middle of the pack. A lot a lot of things to like about her tomorrow without running the rod. She's 10 to 1 with Skybet at the moment, who are paying five places on this race. I'm going to recommend a 0.5 selection here, and that's why she is going to be my long shot of the day. We then go to the evening action at Wolverhampton for my nap in the 7.20 there, and I thought Vin Rouge was a really interesting contender here for Safi Osborne, claiming five. She's riding for her dad, Jamie Osborne. Born. Now this horse at the current, current time recording was available at 9 to 1 with Bet365 and I'm going to recommend a one point each way selection here. Now this horse I thought was actually quite an eye catcher last time out despite finishing in last place at Lingfield in one of the racing league meetings there. Just got going far too late suggesting that this step up to two miles should really suit tomorrow and if you go back and watch some of the races so far this horse has pre previously hinted at ability um, when he uh, made the frame. He finished, I think it was third at Salisbury or fourth at Bath, one of the other two. But at those tracks, he did show promise after getting out of pace and then he stayed on again. And I just think he wants a, a good test of stamina. And he's going to get that tomorrow. You're going to have a couple of horses that will like to go on with things. I think Safi will be out there at the back. and I think she'll come with a good late run. She's really impressed me as well on some hold-up performance this year. Uh, she gave her, one of her dad's horses, hashtag... Me too, a really nice ride at Bath last week. And I think if she did a similar thing there, she's got a good chance of this horse. All weather is fine as well, hasn't been on it yet, but has a pedigree that suggests it should be no problem at all. 72 is a workable mark. She gets a three-year-old allowance. She's dropping two grades. A lot of ticks in the boxes tomorrow for this one, in my opinion. And for me at 9-1, to one, I think she's a great bet there. And that's why I'm going to recommend a one-point each-way selection there um, in the 7.20 at Wolverhampton. So they're the tips for tomorrow's racing. Let me know what you'll be back in at Doncaster tomorrow and what your thoughts are on day one of the St. Ledger Festival meeting. Also as well, let me know what you're back in elsewhere. If you're still enjoying these videos, remember to hit that thumbs up. And also as well, uh, subscribe here to my YouTube channel at Lucky Loader 15 Also as well, if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter is the place to do so, where my handle is at Lucky Loader 15 And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website is www.chrisloaderacing.co.uk. So please come responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners for you tomorrow. I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>